Last Christmas, a good friend gifted me a watch. I wasn't necessarily a watch kind of guy, but he had surprised me with a model that I found perfectly suited to my tastes. That got me thinking about timepieces in general, and how I had always sought to build a unique electronic clock. And what better excuse than to trade in timepieces with a friend? I had recently discovered that there were display devices back in the day called Nixie tubes, and they were widely used in high-grade test equipment and lab devices. I also since learned there's a massive resurgence in their popularity for use in clocks. Thus my Nixie clock project was born and I set myself to task in designing the clock. I had really hated that I couldn't fix this Heathkit function generator, but I tried all manner of repair and replacement and it just didn't happen. So I thought, why not attempt to recycle this case for the Nixie project? I gutted the parts and kept back what useful things I could, all while marveling at the Heathkit design. I was left with this bare chassis and thought I was headed in the right direction, upcycling and all that. I then set to testing a few Nixie tubes I got off of eBay just to make sure I knew how these things worked. I relied heavily on a few existing projects, which I will link in the description. Then my upcycling journey got a little f***ed up. I must have forgotten the mantra, measure twice, cut once, or either I was heavily inebriated, but whatever the case, I ruined the chassis in my attempts to drill the holes for the Nixie sockets. C'est la vie. Thus I moved on to a solution, and for me this was all quite new. I used AutoCAD to design a replacement chassis, which I bid across many manufacturing houses, only to learn that real metal is quite expensive from a place like PCBWay. But then it dawned on me that we live in the age of 3D printing, a true miracle if you ask me. I learned an STL file can equally be loaded into a 3D printer, just as it can a sheet metal CNC machine. I however did not have a 3D printer. But I found this amazing service called CraftCloud, which bids your projects to established US makers, and they can print it for you after a simple selection of materials and quality of extrusion. I went from a bid with PCBWay in China for $300 for a metal chassis shipped all the way down to $26 shipped for a 3D printed chassis from a company in New York. Like I said, a miracle. The part arrived and I inspected it thoroughly for a good fit. One will note it is shorter than the original chassis, which I devised as a means to protect the tubes as they will be inset just a bit. In the end, destroying the first chassis may have been a faded move, because this is far better than the tubes just sticking out from the flush front of the first chassis. I then set to installing the parts that would build out the clock. Tube sockets went in first with an alignment check. Then began the skeleton layout of the electronics boards. I used the Russian clone chips of the 74141 Nixie drivers that are their American equivalent. These chips are often cited as hard to get in Nixie forums on the web, but I have found no such shortage, and they seem way easier to use than driving the tubes with single transistors or multiplexing, at least for me. I arrived at the final layout of components and wired just one digit for testing. I then programmed the clock with the Arduino IDE and checked whether the far most seconds digit was counting properly. I also used the serial readout to determine whether the accuracy of the entire time was displaying correctly. Then began the wiring of all things.
I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the precision of 3D printing as well, given this tube clearance. I discovered in my initial measurements that the tubes would all miraculously fit for a clock, as long as the holes were precise. But then came the trying times. Through my jostling and configuring of the tubes, some cracked and leaked to atmosphere, thus rendering the tube useless. I took the opportunity to inspect the insides of a Nixie tube out of curiosity. These are very intriguing devices and truly a marvel of engineering. It was two that ultimately broke, and then the two replacements broke, and it wasn't until a final set of six tubes and many weeks later that had passed until I was able to replace the broken ones and have four spares. This is good because I have since learned that the IN-4 tubes that I used are the most affordable on eBay because it is the least quality and most prone to breaking. They also have the smallest amount of running hours of all the Nixie tubes listed on their data sheet. A thousand hours to be exact. But there are ways to extend this life. Decreasing the running current of the tubes by half and programming a sleep mode can truly bring up the life of the tube by as much as 20 times from my research. I implemented those changes, so I have faith that this clock will run for a long time reliably. During all that waiting for the tubes, and more tubes, I took the time to personalize the clock, even if my friend never sees this stuff on a daily basis. I configured the placement of all the buttons, and I labeled the clock for easy operation. And then once the tubes arrived, that was it. It had sat ready and functional, and all I needed was the six tubes installed. Once they were, it really glowed a treat. The separator LEDs are just two common red LEDs, which are programmed to flash on every even digit of the seconds which pass. This mirrors the standard digital clock behavior. And even though this clock is going to a friend, I couldn't help but fire up the Apple II green phosphorus screen and watch this beautiful combination of display technologies present to me pressing data like accurate time and the daily news. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.